Hi everyone, this is Derek the Nitwig. Thanks for checking in and welcome to all my new followers. I'm sorry it's taken so long to post an update. It's been a bit of a busy week for me. Last Saturday, I spent the day with my sister at an event in my hometown called the Midtown Walkabout. It was fun spending time with her, although you know we did you know both wear ourselves out that day. And Monday I went and got my flu shot since I got it at the health department. You know, there was about a two hour wait for a five minute appointment time, but you know, the shot was free, so I can't really complain. Tuesday was my crochet class at Joanne's. This time the power was on, so we were able to actually have the class. There were two other people taking it as well. Since they were brand new to crocheting, I got a refresher course, which, you know, is always helpful. I also got some help with crocheting in the round. My sister wasn't able to take the course with me. She was getting ready to fly to visit a friend the next day, so she was a little too busy to go. I did get some information about private classes, which I think my sister will actually be more comfortable taking. I taught my sister how to make a hat and blanket by loom knitting, but I don't have the skills yet to be able to teach her you know, the, the basics of how to crochet. But once she does get the, you know, the initial stitches down, then I'm sure I'll be, I'd be able to help her with any issues that, that do pop up. Wednesday was laundry day. I don't have a washer and dryer, so I had to go out to a laundromat, which it's not a, that's not a big deal. Laundry day gives me plenty of time to work on my junk blanket. Thursday was therapy day. Max and Little Miss both went with me this time instead of just Little Miss. They wanted to show off their Halloween costumes. Max was a police officer and Little Miss was a bat. Little Miss didn't mind her costume, but Max was ready to get out of his pretty quickly. On therapy days, I also get to spend a lot of time working on my junk blanket because the bus system gets me to my therapist about 45 minutes before my session starts. So I have plenty of time beforehand, and then I have about 45 minutes to wait for the bus after my appointment. So I get a lot of work done on the blanket on those days. Since I peopled so much the first part of the week, I spent Friday and Saturday to recuperate and basically just be a hermit. Um, I did briefly wander out of the house today, but I think I'm fairly well recovered and ready to handle humanity again. But on to my yarn work, I ended up frogging the hat that I started knitting for my friend. I goofed up and had started using the wrong size needle, so the hat was going to be way smaller than what I needed to be. I did restart it yesterday, and this is about an hour's worth of stitching or of knitting. So I'm I'm happy with the progress. It's only going to take me you know, it should take me more than a couple more hours to get the hat finished. I have done a lot more of those, I can't say they were amigurumi balls. Um, Max and Little Miss, they keep stealing them. And a lot of times they don't even wait for me to finish before they steal them. So I've had to chase them down to get the balls so that I can actually stuff them to let them play with them. And Max loves to play fetch, and they're the perfect size for him to carry around. And it's cute just watching him walk around the house with a ball in his mouth. I've also found a pattern for kitten nuggets that I like. They are these tiny little things. You can leave an old tail. Um, they're perfect for using at the tail end of your yarn, like little scraps of yarn that you have left over. I did have to learn the bobble stitch. That's what makes the ears. Let's see if you can tell. And the bobble stitch was a lot easier than I thought. I mean, basically, it's five double stitches in one thing. I had put off learning, you know, working this pattern for a long time just because of the bobble stitch, but it was a lot easier than I expected. Um, and then I just used some embroidery thread to make the eyes and the nose and mouth. Uh, and I like it. They're, um, they're They're easy, but not as easy as the balls, but... I think now that I know the bobble stitch, I'll look for a lot more patterns that actually use it just because it's a fun little stitch to do. And I will include the link to that pattern. It was one I got for free off Ravelry. So I'll include the link in the description down below. While I was at Joann's, I picked up a latch hook rug kit. I used to love doing them as a kid, but being the impatient ADHD kid I was, I almost never finished them. So there was always a ton of, you know, half finished rugs and then of course you know you lose the yarn and so then you can't do anything with them now i still have adhd and i don't always have a lot of patience but i find the kits calming now i mean to me it's kind of like diamond painting it's like a adult coloring the, the repetitive steps they just work so great at settling my brain and i like seeing the picture slowly appear this kit i love right upside down because 
Max is that color and Little Miss is that color. So it's, it was just perfect. So I work on that. And thankfully, while I'm doing it, the cats aren't trying to steal my yarn like they usually are. Now, I started working on a hat when I was in the crochet class, when I was working on crocheting in the round. And this hat, it didn't take me that long to finish, probably just a couple hours. The pattern actually called for it to be a brain hat. And I crocheted the cord to make the, the little brain wrinkles. But I couldn't get them to lay like I wanted to actually look like a brain. Um, and that may just be the perfectionist in me. I'm, I might work on it a little bit more. What I like most of the, the hat is half double stitch crochet. And then you've got this neat little kind of ribbing pattern here that is um, double crochet, but it alternates in front of the post, behind the post. And so I was just kind of tickled to learn, you know, that stitch as well. And then it just goes down, you know, you add some white, you know, and the rest of it is just single crochet at the bottom. What I probably will end up doing with this hat is putting it in my donation pile because it's the weather here is finally starting to get to be autumn weather. And the area of town I live in, we have you know, a, a huge homeless po you know, population where I live. I guys live kind of midtown, so they tend to congregate um, between this. And there's a, another agency called Other Options that works with um, HIV positive people that I well, I donate a lot to them as well, you know, when I have stuff to donate. So between either, you know, the homeless shelters or other options, that's where, you know, I'm going to start working on, you know, getting hats ready for people. I did more work on the purple blanket. Um, I Because it's so wide and I'm just knitting, you know, in rows, I've only got a couple rows done. But that project is the one that I go to when I'm just getting frustrated with everything and I need something mindless and super simple that I can just do and to help me relax. So, you know, I've, I'm not going to show the progress on that because I maybe I've done maybe like one and a half, two rows on there. One of the things I'm curious about is when, how everyone does the yarn, like when they change colors, like in this hat, you know, you're going from the pink, the blue to the white. When I started, when I was loom knitting, what I would do would just tie a knot. And then when I was done, weave in the ends. When I took the knitting class, they taught us to just add the yarn without tying a knot, and then you, you weave in the ends as you go, which it works, and it's great because once you're done with a couple rows, you don't even see, you know, the ends of the yarn. But it is hard at first because there's not, you know, you've got a loose end of yarn, and you've got to figure out how to, how to hold the tension just to get the first couple sti stitches in. Um, I have a video coming up in my watch later queue that's on, it's a tutorial on the magic knot, so I'm going to try learning that when it comes up. Um, hopefully that it'll pop up in the queue sometime this week, but you know, I'm just curious. How do, how do you guys handle the yarn changes? I got a new set of bamboo crochet hooks and a pair of aluminum knitting needles from eBay this week. I'm a bit ambivalent about the crochet hooks. They do have a great pointed end, which is nice because I tend to have a fairly tight tension and this makes it easy to get into the stitch without splitting the yarn. They don't slide as well as the aluminum needles do. There's nothing that snags it or anything. They just, it doesn't slide as well. It may be something that improves with time or just maybe how bamboo needles are. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just something I'm not used to. One problem I do have is this, the hook part is not as deep as they are on my metal hooks. So when I'm crocheting and I'm pulling the, you know, the yarn through the stitch, I have to take the, this and, you know, twist it to keep the the yarn on the on the hook, which I don't like that. That may just be something like that I need to get used to. It may be something that makes it end up where I don't use these crochet hooks that much. But since I only paid two dollars and seventy one cents for a set of twelve of them, I feel like I got a fairly good deal. Now the knitting needles, they are three point five millimeters and they are 13.78 inches long, I think. They are kind of, because they're so thin, they look like they could bend. And I think one of them actually is slightly bent. I don't know if you can see that. Um, that I don't think that's really going to be a problem. I just feel like if I'm working a project that gets to be too heavy, that that could actually cause like significant bending. But then again, with needles this small, I'm not sure that I would ever 
have a project that would actually be that heavy because you'd end up using a lighter or a smaller yarn. Now these knitting needles, I paid, let's see, um, $1.45 for the pair. And so, that, I mean, that's not a bad price. You know, they do come from, you know, from China. Most cheap things on eBay do. Um, there was free shipping but, and I had to, it took probably three weeks to get them in, which honestly for $1.45, I'm not going to complain about a three week wait. I had plenty of other things I was going to be doing. So I, like I said, again, I still think that I got a really good deal on that. Now the coming week projects, I'm going to be focusing on David's hat, um, my latch hook kit, and a lot of, you know, hats to donate to, you know, homeless shelters, other options, things like that. I do also want to experiment with the teddy bear pattern to see if I can make a bigger bear. I don't know if it's going to be something as simple as just doubling, you know, all the, the counts in the yarn, or if it's going to be something that I need to find a pattern converter or something. But that's, you know, something I'm going to experiment on, you know, good way to learn something. So let me know in the comments what projects you're working on and how you handle skein changes. Have a great week, everyone. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do?